Lore Lesson 4, The Corruption. Lore Page, Between a Statue and a Hard Place. We angered the wrong people. These red, glowing freaks cornered us, and the little ammunition we brought didn't hold them off. They flayed Stanley right in front of us. As he lay dying, his eyes turned red just like them. It's only a matter of time before they do the same to the rest of us. Governor Sullis, please receive the following dispatch regarding your request for reconnaissance from the Northern Territories. My apologies for the mood of the missive, but I can assure you that it matches that of the members of our expedition. We've discovered much in our assessment of the territory, including additional enlightenment on these corrupted creatures we've been receiving word of in recent months. At first glance, the island of Eternum may grant you charming visions of tranquility and mystique, but as we journey further into the depths of her clutches, she's not as breathtaking and serene as some of her beauty has led us to believe. Within her grasp are inherent dangers, and if you don't tread lightly, they will turn on you in a flash. These corrupted are undeniably more than we had expected. They have a history. They have drive. They have vision. And they appear to have the resources to succeed. Allow me to explain. In addition to after action reports from our scouting parties, we have discovered various fragments of information seemingly left for discovery from those who have traveled this land before us. These deliberately placed pages, oftentimes resembling reports to superiors, have given us a glimpse into the true nature of the island, for better or worse. It seems many adventurers upon the island have befallen the fate of these corrupted. We've spoken to rangers who have been afield and divulged several methods to which they've witnessed humans transforming into twisted, red-eyed humanoids upon death. Some have reported comrades falling in battle to the corrupted, only to be risen in death as one of them. Others have reported festering wounds caused by the corrupted, resulting in a freezing sensation traveling from the injury and spreading throughout their bodies. There are testimonies of a corrupted sludge overtaking victims and transforming them. We've even been told the corrupted employ tactics to pin down and shackle their victims, only to discover days later those prisoners had been mutated. As disturbing as one might imagine upon receiving word, a missive arrived from the scouting party beyond the cleave. And it reads, They're not just what we once were. They're still like us. I've seen beyond the fortification. They have farms, towns, even what might be a church at the summit of the mountain. From Acting Captain L.G. As you see, Governor, the corrupted are not the mindless husks they may appear to be at first glance. They are cunning, organized, even strategic in their actions. In our travels and studies, we've been able to discover the corrupted even seek out and gather ancient artifacts from the depths of this island. What we haven't been able to uncover, however, is why. Much of the documentation we've unveiled mentions the encampments and settlements of the corrupted and how very advanced they have become. Many scouts have reported these settlements are much like our own, bustling with activity. Inflicted cooks prepare gruel to serve to the camp's inhabitants. Corrupted smiths tinker away at perverted creations. Alchemists mix unknown concoctions, and science is studied with fervor. It's almost as if, despite being affected with the corruption, these creatures have continued to thrive at their chosen craft, much like they did in life. Reconnaissance has revealed structures near the shattered mountain to the north. It was even described as a civilization of the corrupted. One of our acting captains of field sent a report regarding a red church discovered by one of his scouting parties, and he wrote, You saw a church, I heard myself say? 
Yet the corrupted have no religion like any we know. You think this means they are to be reasoned with? That peace will be easier? A church only means we have a canyon wider than the great cleave between us. Not physically, but in spirit. We know they do not seek to kill us. Do you welcome conversion? To that? I pointed at the crown of the shattered mountain, the isle torn from its foundation. You think you bring words of hope that we might make peace, but I tell you, in a single structure, you have given us proof that there will be no peace until we are all as they are and all worship as they do. We are no match for the corrupted if a twisted religion drives them. I had no patience to speak to the man further. I shall do question him again when I have calmed myself. The corrupted seem to have some sort of God they worship. But why in God's name would they have churches and priests? What's more, the corrupted build, those obelisks, the mystical structures jutting out of the ground and into the sky surrounded by some sort of otherworldly energy. The rangers have described them as alive, floating above cyst-like wells in the landscape. Floating stones, like the one atop the shattered mountain, harnessed by the corrupted and their priests. Priests, I say! They carve indecipherable symbols into them. What their purpose may be is still unknown, even to our most accomplished scholars. The corrupted appear to communicate quite effectively through some kind of written language. Many reports have described this text as indecipherable, strange symbols and markings looking like no language you have ever encountered. The corrupted strangely appear where our colonists have established settlements. They have become a fixture in these areas, creating their own spike camps from which to launch attacks. It seems as our settlements grow and thrive, the incursions become more frequent and more violent. It's almost as if they know when we progress and when we begin to thrive. Luckily, many of our encampments have been able to fend off the attacks with the help of those under local government employ and volunteer conscripts. Others haven't been quite as lucky. The corrupted seek to stain and dominate this very island with their vile presence, taking what was once serene and peaceful and twisting it to their will. They can rip open the ground and flood an area with contemptible creatures and structures. The very air we breathe turns into a choking black smoke and all is illuminated by an evil red glow, pulsating with an unearthly light. The corruption of this land grows. Yet, although our settlements can be besieged by the corrupted hordes themselves, they are somehow protected from the corruption seeping in from the land. It's almost as if something within the earth protects the ground under our outposts from withering decay. Could it be this Azoth substance we so desperately seek is ingrained in the soil and doesn't allow the corruption to manifest? We have our best science and pedologists at work to uncover the mystery. Intelligence reports that rangers have discovered portals possibly relating to monoliths near Merkgard where corrupted pour out without pause. What could be on the other side of these portals? It seems they're corrupted amass an army to the north, but for what purpose? Our expedition came across an encampment just south of the Great Cleave, where we encountered quite an interesting individual, Dr. Theophrastus Bombastus. A naturalist and philosopher had set up a spike camp and research tent to observe and study the corruption in the area. Now how he was blessed with such a noble and difficult to pronounce name, I don't know, but I digress. Dr. Bombastus gave us the most intriguing insight into the corrupted we face. Most of the information was similar to what we had been able to discover on our own, but some information proved to be unknown to anyone we had spoken with to date. The good doctor told us there was no origin of the corrupted or when it first appeared. Some believe it spawned from the inherent evil in humanity, while others believe it is linked to the former inhabitants of the island, these ancients, possibly from their failed experiments with Azoth that was found here. 
We have indeed seen numerous statues of strange humanoid beings with split faces and four arms. Perhaps these are the ancients he speaks of? Dr. Bombastus claims to know of evidence proving the corrupted destroyed the ancients and their advanced technological civilization many years ago. He encouraged us to speak with his companion, a William Heron, an expert on the ancients. But Mr. Heron hasn't returned from his last expedition to Shattered Mountain as of this writing. Dr. Bombastus continued to explain that the corruption itself may be caused by a parasite that feeds upon the Azoth found within all beings. Once the corruption takes hold, it turns them into twisted and malevolent servants intent upon spreading their evil influence. The doctor was currently studying what exactly traps our kind here, whether it's the corruption itself or some other force that is responsible for the impenetrable storm wall that forced us all to the shore. He is sure the dark side of the human psyche makes us especially vulnerable. Things like rage, pride, and greed draw the corruption to us. He persists their only goal is the complete subjugation of Aeternum's inhabitants. Dr. Bombastus warned us not to hesitate in their destruction and stresses that they have lost all connection to their humanity. He describes them as cunning and tactical tricksters. Corruption, not only relegated to humans it inflicts, but the beasts of the island to carry out the will of their masters. The most dangerous forms of the corrupted are their priests. The corrupted clerics are the leaders of the legion and use dark magic to bend the wills of the unwary. What's worse, Dr. Bombastus mentioned in particular two major corruption threats the inhabitants of this island will eventually face. The first is a mysterious being known only as the Tempest. It is unknown if this entity originated here or was shipwrecked like us. The second is a dangerous sorceress in Ebonscale Reach, Empress Zhou Taiying. He claims she is transforming the region into a bastion for the corrupted. Unbelievably, she controls an army and a navy poised to strike at all of Aeternum. He persists that she is our greatest threat. Governor, I regret that we do not have more enlightenment to shed, as this is the entirety of our findings to date. More excursions across the Great Cleave to the Shattered Mountain region are in the works, but I have decided to grant the encampment a week to resupply and rest. As of this writing, we have lost six members to the calamity of this cursed island. And as you can surely imagine, we are facing insurmountable obstacles afield and at times narrowly escaping with our lives. The corrupted lurk. They scout. They stalk our encampment causing us to employ a vigilant watch and continuous patrols. On behalf of my expedition, I sincerely hope that this information is of infinite value to the Syndicate's efforts. I will send additional findings as I am able. Your most loyal servant and friend, Cassius Kilborn. <laughs>